for who we are because of Bob Crandall. And that we, if we're gonna name this campus um, after anyone or anything, it needs to be Bob Crandall uh, because no one uh, cares as much about this company as Bob Crandall. No one has done as much for this company as Bob Crandall. He is, no one is more competitive. <laughs> no one is uh, more intense. No one works harder. No one builds better teams of people. No one wants to win more. Um, Bob did all those things. And because of Bob, uh, American did win and thrived. And then... So I know I speak for everyone, past, current, and future team member, when I thank Bob for all that he's done for American. Uh, on top of all those things, uh, Bob was also a great innovator. Um, for 25 years, he served as chairman and CEO from 85 to 98, as Lee said. Uh, but he's a trailblazer in the business, uh, modernizing the Sabre reservation system, introducing the industry's first frequent flyer program to the world, something we call Advantage still, uh, and developing the industry's sophisticated yield management system, which, where's Barbara? Um, Bob was telling me earlier that you and he did this on like on a sheet of paper, <laughs> created yield management, so that's pretty cool. Um, so anyway, um, and we still use it today, and it's, it's the reason, again, one of the great reasons, again, that we're able to uh, do all the things that this company's done. So look, Bob's a legend, not just at American, but throughout our industry, uh, always was known for his industry leadership, um, sometimes pulling others in the industry along that didn't want to be pulled along by screaming at them. Um, <laughs> but anyway, look, the, uh, the best way uh, that we can, one, honor Bob, but also, more importantly, inspire our company uh, and the people that work here uh, to be all that we can be is to um, have uh, that, mem that, that reminder every time we come in here. Uh, as this is, this is what, what Bob built is uh, what we are um, fortunate enough to have as our legacy and that we have an obligation to lead with the same sort of uh, drive and determination and care uh, that Bob did uh, for so long. So um, anyway, we're, we're inspired by his example, by his contributions. Um, and and then, so anyway, we're gonna let Bob get up and say a few words, but I, I did wanna tell you a little story about when I, when I um, asked Bob if it would be okay to name this, the, the Robert L. Crandall campus. So we, this was, I don't know, three or four years ago. Um, and um, I had this idea, um, but I knew I had to, you know, first tell Bob and be sure he was okay with it, and I, one, I needed to tell him. So anyway, I, I, I sent Bob a note and said, gosh, I'd like to come talk to you. Uh, he was in town for an event, um, and he said, yeah, sure, come on over. Um, Gwen and I were going to the same event, and he says, come on over to, to our hotel room. So anyway, I, you know, knew I couldn't articulate in words how amazing this place was going to look. And I wanted him to know that this isn't just some little thing we're talking about. This is, this is you're going to, it's going to be something worthy of your name. So I needed pictures. So I asked Steve to ask the architects to give me some, some drawings, uh, which they did. But you know, anyway, this, they were, they were drawings and there were no, no great details in it. Uh, just a picture book um, that I was going to, that I was going to show Bob how nice it was. So anyway, we're in the car on the way over. And my wife, Gwen, says to me, so how are you going to do this? How are you going to tell him? I said, well, I'm going to tell him, and then I'm going to show him these pictures. She's like, that's not how you do it. you got to, like, build it up. you got to show him the pictures and how nice it is and how great it's going to be, and then tell him. And, oh, by the way, Bob, we want to name it the Robert L. Crandall Campus. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. But he's going to grill me while I'm going through the deck. Um, if I do it that way, she's like, doesn't look, you're an adult, take him through the book, <laughs> take him through the book, get him, let him get excited about it. And then tell him you're going to name it after I'm like, all right, I guess that's right. So anyway, we go in, sit down and Bob has no idea what I'm there for. And I say, look, I want to show you this book about our new headquarters. Um, he goes, okay. So he sits down. I show him the first, I turn to the first page. It's, it's a picture of the, of the, the buildings over there. Um, and I show it to him and he looks at it and he goes, it's a lot of glass. <laughs> you know, it's really hot in Texas. <laughs> yeah, he says, now, Al Casey built a building with a lot of glass and we had, we had to spend a fortune on air conditioning for that thing. <laughs> like, this is going really well. So, okay, thanks. I write that down, a lot of glass. Um, 
and the next, there's, no, there's nothing else in it. The rest is just like pictures of the interior of people walking around like cartoon figures. And I'm just trying to get through as fast as I can. And I can tell he's kind of thinking, this is a horrible presentation. And at, 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 then at one point he stops me and he says, how many square feet is this? And I had zero idea. I mean, I couldn't even think close enough. I had no clue. So I do what anyone's ever presented to Bob Crandall knows never to do. I said, I don't know. <laughs> and thankfully, I mean, I could tell by the way he looked at me because I know the look. He, he didn't like it. And he was thinking, how is this guy running American Airlines? And he just looks at me and I just keep flipping and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get through this thing. So I get through it finally and I'm like, okay, and here's the deal. We'd like to name this the Robert L. Crandall Campus. And he gets a big smile on his face. He goes, well, I'm not going to punch you in the face for that. <laughs> so then, it continues, though, because that book that Steve gave me, I've been known to leave materials in taxi cabs and airplanes and places I shouldn't. So Steve admonishes me in advance and says, Doug, you cannot, no one's seen this. you you got to destroy it once you're done with it. I'm like, okay, well, we're going out to the event. So I say to Bob, hey, Bob, do you mind? Just I'm going to leave this with you. Just please make sure it's destroyed. I promised our guys I would. I said, the, our board hasn't even seen this. And Bob says, you haven't told your board? <laughs> I said, well, we've told them. They've approved the headquarters, but they haven't seen like these pictures. And he says, well, when you tell them, you might want to know how many square feet it is. <laughs> <laughs> 1.4 4 million, Mr. Crandall. 1.4 million square feet. So look, I like that story because it's funny, but I also like it because it's it just, uh, that's, that's what we all learn from Bob. You, if you're going to present to Bob, you know, your, you know your facts. And everyone that ever worked at American knew their facts, and we were good because of it, uh, because Bob was demanding of us, and he made sure uh, that people, you know, we, I, Gerard and I and Tom sat through long, long budget reviews um, and as a finance person, you think, well, he didn't take anything out. He just asked a gazillion questions, but he didn't take, any, he didn't take that much money out. Um, what Bob did with budget reviews was, was make sure leaders knew what they were doing. Um, and he used that time to question and question and make sure that we all knew everything about our business um, so that we could go and run it well. And anyway, 1.4 million square feet. <laughs> Never going to forget it. All right. So with that said, um, I'm going to turn it back to a lead, to, uh, to, I'm going to turn it over to Bob for a few words. You know, nobody can, uh, nobody can hear that kind of fulsome praise and not be grateful. This is a great day for me, obviously, and, and I had intended uh, to sort of share a, a celebration, if you will, of three of the many good things that have happened to me in my life. The first of those good things that have happened to me in my life uh, happened in 1952, and I met the woman that became my wife. Stand up. She's, she's been my wife for 64 years. And she's directly responsible for all those kids and grandkids you saw earlier. So those are the first pieces, two good pieces of luck. The third great piece of luck that happened that I want to mention this morning is the opportunity to join American Airlines in April of 1973. I had previously been in the airline business. I was with TWA for two or three years, four or five years actually, and they put some people in charge that I thought were unqualified. So I decided I'd go do something else and I moved over to become the chief financial officer for Bloomingdale's. Now, if you're in the retail business, it really makes a big difference to you whether men's socks are on the second floor or the third floor. <laughs> but I was used to the airline business with way more consequential issues than where the men's socks were. 
And I, watch, I thought the retail business was sort of like watching grass grow. So when Americans CFO left and they asked me to join, even though I had only been out of the business for about a year or so, my reaction was, where do I sign? And I did. I joined the company in April of 1973, and I was there until 1978. And after I joined the airline business, I was no longer bored. Things got off to a very fast start. First, the board fired the chairman. And the next month, they fired the president. And the month after that, they called back C.R. Smith, who ran the company from mid-73 to February of 74, when my predecessor, Al Casey, joined the company. And Al was a finance guy. And so he and I got along very well. We only had one problem. I could never persuade Al that there was no difference between our before-tax and after-tax figures. And he said, why is there no difference? I said, I airlines never make any money, Al, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Not long after that, he, he and I decided it would be better if he ran finance. Maybe he could produce some numbers. And I, if I went off and ran marketing, and I did that. And in those early years, we struggled. American was in kind of dire straits in those days. We sold off a bunch of hotels. We had a bunch of 747s that we couldn't fill up, so we put upper deck piano lounges on them. We we sought to correct some serious imbalances and we moved the company from New York uh, to Dallas, Fort Worth. Actually, Fort Worth, the mayor assured me. Now, I would extend these proceedings by far too long if I made any effort whatsoever to highlight even the events of the years that occurred between 1978, when the airline industry was deregulated, in 1998 when I left. From my point of view, one of the highlights of those years was the fact that I became president in 1980, 80, 82, and succeeded Al Casey as chairman when he retired in 1985. And I must say, I'm very proud of what we accomplished in those years. We simply changed faster than our competitors did and we responded better to deregulation, which was an entirely different world than the regulated world that all of us had lived in. Now, as you can all imagine, I am very pleased, despite my reluctance to, to uh, accept it when Doug didn't, didn't know how many square feet there were. <laughs> I'm really pleased that Doug recommended to the board and that the board approved naming this campus in my honor. Praise is always welcome. Having the family here for this recognition makes it a particularly special day. As pleased as I am, though, I want to be sure that no one ever gets the impression that success is in any sense individual. The success of any company is absolutely dependent on the strength of its team. It is true that senior management has a role to play. But the performance of any company is made and sustained by the day in and day out performance of the team. And that is particularly true of airlines. Many airline employees live and behave like office workers in other industries, in handsome settings like this. But many, particularly pilots and flight attendants and mechanics and ticket agents, have very unique interfaces with the traveling public. Pilots and flight attendants and ticket agents are the public face of the company. And they are what makes the public decide whether American is a great company or not. And our mechanics are the public's first line of defense against maintenance lassitude. One of the great fascinations of our business for me, one of the reasons I loved it so much, is its enormous complexity. Responding successfully to that kind of complexity demands extraordinarily sophisticated tools and very sophisticated communication mechanisms. But they must be used by committed partisans who constantly pursue faster progress and greater success and who are unflinchingly loyal to the company's high standards of performance and integrity. 
the success represented by these buildings and the honor accorded to me in their naming was earned by the tens of thousands of American Airlines people who contributed their time and talents to maximizing the impact of the efforts and decisions made by, thus, by those of us in management. I absolutely loved my time at American. I hope that all of you who are, in, who are still enjoying active involvement will do everything you can to mirror the commitment of your predecessors and make American as great a company as it can possibly be. Thank you all very much. <clears throat> So we're going to um, now unveil, this was a, a part of the campus that was built to uh, pay tribute to Bob. So we're going to have Bob, Bob and Doug come over and cut a ribbon and then we'll unveil an icon that commemorates Bob's service. Uh, strong words today from Bob Crandall. I think I speak for everyone here when we, when we acknowledge that neither one of them know what they're doing right now. Okay. Well, Bob and Doug, look at that. I, I want to invite you all when we're, we're done with the festivities here. There are some placards up here with some words about Bob that were written when he was CEO. So you have the Dallas Morning News who wrote Crandall. He wrote the playbook on how to manage a modern, major, competitive U.S. airline. And we have the Fort Worth Star-Telegram who said, equal parts passion, brutal honesty, and a competitive spirit. And then we have Bruce Ledbetter, who was a Braniff investor and a uh, solid competitor, a longtime competitor of Bob's, who wrote, Crandall took a very troubled airline and turned it into an absolute powerhouse. He surrounded himself with smart people. His life was devoted to making that airline work. So no truer words have been, have been said. And Bob, thank you. We stand on your shoulders. And everyone here joins me in saying we will make you proud in the future days ahead. Thank you. All right, so this concludes the, uh, the formal part. I just want to invite everyone to tour the campus. We've got food trucks. 